The LGBTQ plus community is one of the many communities out there that has seen little representation in video games. It was only up until semi-recently that we started seeing representation in the community in television and cinema, and with the popularity of games like The Last of Us, I think it is important for us to talk about it. We have seen a growing amount of characters that are members of the LGBTQ plus community, and despite backlash from those who complain on forums, it is only going to increase over time. Companies expanding their diversity opens the doors to a whole new group of players to purchase and play their games, so a diversity is not going anywhere. And today I'm going to talk about one of the games that I believe is one of the first games to include members of the LGBTQ plus community, the Borderlands series. The Borderlands series is known for its large cast of interesting and unique characters, both playable and non-playable. What had initially started as a looter shooter that was made in the, in the style of Mad Max became a game that with fleshed out characters that each had their own personalities. First, I will discuss why inclusivity is important in media, especially video games. Adding diversity to video games and the gaming industry as a whole promotes that anyone can game and anyone can make games and it shows young gamers that it is normal to be different and that there are characters that are like the players that they can look up to. While there is still a long way to go when it comes to inclusivity, developers are starting to make strides where other forms of entertainment are lacking. Next, I will discuss why I think it is important for, to bring up the Borderlands series when it comes to LGBTQ plus representation in video games. While we do not see much in terms of diversity in Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, the pre-sequel, Tales from the Borderlands, and Borderlands 3 all excel when it comes to character diversity. Borderlands 2 was released before same-sex marriage was legalized in the United States. And being that Gearbox is an American company, I believe that having this representation goes a long way because it was making strides before com other companies and even the United States recognize that love is love. Borderlands also keeps this as a theme in their entire series. Despite constant backlash from edgy members of online communities, Gearbox has kept Borderlands inclusive to people of different races, sexual identities, and gender identities. For the next part of the video, I will discuss how the game represents their LGBTQ representation. In Borderlands 2, two of the default four playable characters are members of the LGBTQ community, Axon and Maya. While not addressed frequently, Axon is revealed to be bisexual. When revealed, there was a little bit of anger from the community stating that Gearbox was shoving a quote-unquote gay agenda down their throats. But soon, the, the community got over it, and Axon became one of the more beloved characters. We often see media make LGBTQ plus characters sexuality their only character trait, but Borderlands actually turns them into a character with a fully fledged out personality. Maya was revealed to be asexual, and some people saw it as a stereotype of asexuality because of her lack of understanding. I personally did not see this as a stereotype, but as a reflection of her sheltered upbringing due to her being a siren. There are a few minor NPCs that are same-sex same -sex couples, but Sir Hammerlock is the first main NPC that you meet in Borderlands 2 and is gay. In one of his side quest missions, you learn that he is gay when he talks about an old boyfriend, but I will talk more about Hammerlock when it gets to, when we get to Borderlands 3. Then there is Mad Moxie, who is shown to be a stereotypical thirst trap, but throughout the games you learn more about her character and that her sexuality is either bisexual or pansexual due to her relationship history being across the entire gender spectrum. There are more characters that contribute to Borderlands 2's diverse cast, but I could be here all day and night talking about this game. Borderlands the pre-sequel and Tales from the Borderlands tie into one another with the playable character Athena and one of the main NPCs Janie Springs. In a random dialogue you have with Janie, you learn that she is not attracted to men and if you are playing as Athena, she will occasionally flirt with you. We learn of Athena's sexuality in Tales from the Borderlands when we learn that she and Janie are a couple. And as of right now, we have not seen these characters in Borderlands 3, but since Gearbox is still releasing content, there is a possibility for us to see them again. Borderlands 3 kept almost all of the same cast members that we saw in Borderlands 2. Hammerlock, Moxie, Maya, Axon, and more returned to the story and to the DLC for the game. What Borderlands 3 did add to our diverse cast of characters is Flack, who is a non-binary and omnisexual character. In today's American society, transgender and non-binary members of the LGBTQ community face arguably a little bit more hate from online communities, but Flack quickly became one of the fan favorite characters. One of the developers of the game, who is non-binary, came up with the idea to make one of the playable characters non-binary. We see Sir Hamelock again throughout the story, but the second DLC focuses around him. The second DLC, Guns, Love, and Tentacles, focuses around him and his boyfriend, Wainwright Jacobs. You are helping them prepare for a wedding, and Wainwright is cursed to be taken over by a lost soul and marry the evil widow. Your goal is to free him from the curse and carry out the, we the wedding. There's a lot more I could discuss, but we, again, will be here all day. Finally, to wrap things up, I want to discuss why I believe it is important for us to talk about the Borderlands series when it comes to inclusivity in video games. 
Borderlands was one of the first games to include members of the LGBTQ community even before same-sex marriage was legalized in the United States. I personally believe that if it weren't for the Borderlands series, including members of the LGBTQ community, developers would face a little bit more backlash and wouldn't be as encouraged to add diversity and, stick, and to stick to the norm. So thank you Gearbox for kicking off an era of games that can include everyone of different sexual orientations and gender identities. And remember that love is love.